Mark Ray Mundy for MMAfighting.com at the California State Capitol with Andy Foster, the Executive Officer of the California State Athletic Commission. And we're here in Sacramento. Andy, uh, we just got out of the John Jones licensing hearing. J Jones was granted his license back. He will be allowed to fight at UFC 232 in two weeks against Alexander Gustafsson. Andy, I just wanted to ask you off the bat, did, ever, did this, anything surprise you about the hearing, how it went? You recommended off the bat right away that, that Jones got his license back. Did anything surprise you about how that meeting went? Um, no, I, I, thought, I thought it went well. The commissioners, um, I, th I think they're, they were agreeable to give it back to him, obviously, and uh, we wish John Jones the best. One of the, the more interesting comments that, that you made, and, and you've kind of been consistent about this throughout the whole process, is that you fully believe that John Jones did not intentionally cheat. Could you, could you maybe illuminate us as to why you're so confident in that? Well, I mean, how do you pass every out-of-competition test leading up to a fight, and the one test that you know is coming, you fail with trace amounts, and then it comes out to be, after, the, after everything's looked at thoroughly, that, that, that it was indeed a very, very small uh, quantity. Um, and the tests were pretty pretty frequent up until that point. Um, I just think that if you're going to cheat, there's uh, probably better ways to do it. John Jones is under the uh, USADA program, which is USADA is the anti-doping partner of the UFC. And in that case, which, which kind of was a, a dual jurisdiction case, uh, in their case, he was given 15 months. It was, it was 18 months after USADA, and then arbitration bumped down to 15 months. Now, one of the things that you said today in the meeting was that you, are, you were wrong about how you approached this. And, and we, were, we were at a CSAC meeting in February where you deferred in some ways to USADA that the commission would, would kind of see what USADA would do as far as the suspension length and then go by that. Why did you say that you were wrong to do that? We yielded executive discretion, discretion granted by the legislature of the state to a third-party drug testing company paid for by, the, by a promoter. Now, I mean, there, it's a good thing. You heard me say, the UFC has done many great things by cleaning up the sport, by hiring USADA, by doing these things. But the penalties are not, in my view, they're not always consistent and in any, any reason, it, it causes more burden for the fighter. They have to fight uh, with the commission or, 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 you know, adjudicate with the commission. And they have to adjudicate with USADA. Sometimes those are the same. Sometimes there's not. I say that because the process needs to be fixed. This doesn't need to keep going. We don't need... John Jones should not have had to been here twice. He should not have went, had to go through this USADA process, in my view. He should have got his 15 or 18 months back in February because whether I think he meant to cheat or not, he had it in his system. Nobody's disputing that. He's getting in trouble. He paid a hefty penalty for that, uh, uh, for that uh, uh, substance in his system. It didn't mean that, that uh, you know, and, and, and we have to talk about Daniel Cormier a little bit in this thing. I mean, there has to be justice for him in, in this sense. But getting back to Mr. Jones, this process is not just about Mr. Jones. It's about many of these athletes. And if, if, you're, if, you, if you have money to fight with, i.e. attorneys, and you can test supplements and all these things, and then I guess this is just like it is in any part of the criminal justice system. And this is not criminal, but any, any justice system, if you can afford to get good defense, you're able to prove certain things. The USADA program has been very helpful in cleaning up the sport. Here in California, and I can't speak to other jurisdictions, but here in California we have sole jurisdiction. I just need the results. Collect the urine, send me the results. We'll take it from there on our licensees. What changed between February when you said you would defer to USADA as far as a suspension length and a sanction to now when you're saying that you were wrong to do that? Well, I mean, I, I just didn't like the process that he went through. Um, I, I, 
couldn't, he couldn't get, it took a long time and ended up having to go to an arbitrator. The arbitrator reduced the initial uh, recommendation that I think USADA had sent out from 18 months to 15 months. I don't want to tell you wrong, but it was something like that. And, and the process is affecting a fighter's ability to make a living. There's a lot to that. Uh, obviously, the, 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 it needs to be, the actions need to be punitive, but it's this commission's job and other commissions around the country's job to protect the public and to protect the public welfare. And I think that, I think it's a little bit, uh, a little bit beyond the scope of a drug testing company to assume that role, and we allowed it. We allowed it. I went along with it. The commission went along with it. But if, when I have it to do over again, I'm sure probably in time I'll have it to do over again, we'll deal with this differently. Is there a concern because there is that financial relationship between the UFC and USADA? I really didn't, I really don't, I really don't see that. I really think USADA acted um, qu quite independently in this situation. I just didn't like the way that, that it kept going. He had to pay attorneys twice. He had to spend money. He had to keep being, you know, and part of it's being, you know, he had to be nervous uh, uh, twice. And we, if, what, if the, what if the suspensions didn't line up? Or what if they came in too low and the California commissioner said, no, we're not doing that. That's too low. Or what if they came in too high? That was my initial concern. Initially, they were talking about four years. I thought that would be a miscarriage of justice. He would, he, would, he would not be, you know, there's a good chance that he will not be the same fighter in four years. Now, I don't know that. I don't want to say that, but people age, and if you're out for four years, you get rusty. I mean, there's lots of things I can say. He's, he's the best in the world right now. He's at the top of his game. We'll see how good he is against Alexander here in a couple, couple weeks or whenever. But uh, it's not about the financial relationship. I think they – I don't have a problem uh, with U UFC – a pan, you saw to, to do the drug testing. And I think that's fine. And look, the adjudication process might work in some jurisdictions that don't do this on a fairly regular basis. We, we, we're okay over here. We have the Attorney General's office that helps us and we'll, we'll get this done. You said during the meeting that you had spoken to USADA about these concerns that you, that you made public today. What was that conversation like? It was yesterday. And I hadn't heard from them in a while, and uh, they 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 called me, and it was a cordial conversation. I met I met a new guy um, on the phone, of course, and uh, he seemed very like he's going to have a meeting with the different executive directors coming up, and he seemed very. It was it was a, it was a cordial conversation, but I did express my concerns that I have, and I had a uh, quite a few of them. Some I'm I'm laying out 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 to you. My concern is always about what's right for the public and what's right for these fighters and how are they to be treated these are independent contractors I don't think we can be lost on that point these are independent contractors and they're licensees to make a living now they're they're with the promotional company the UFC but I think when you start talking about taking away that right to make a living, you need to be sure, 100% sure, and have all your facts in a row because we have saw several times, I'm sure you, you could recall, where a fighter gets charged and later it is determined it was unintentional supplement use or something to that effect. I mean, there's, there's lots of cases. And for me, I would rather, like, let's get that looked at on the front side before we publicly go after this person. And, and I think that process has been amended recently so that that part doesn't happen again. Right, the UFC changed its process uh, about when they're going to announce potential violations. Uh, a couple other things, uh, Andy. Also one of the things that came out in the meetings, speaking of USADA, is that Commissioner Martha Shen or Kidez proposed to John Jones today that he enroll in VADA, which is the Voluntary Anti-Doping Agency, uh, neutral to the UFC, neutral to, to USADA. Uh, I guess the, the outcome of that was that they want to look more into it. They, they, they agreed to it in principle. 
John Jones and his, and his attorney Howard Jacobs agreed to in principle, they want to look more into the details of what that might mean. What do you think about this, and, and, what, and, and do you feel like that is a necessary thing, like Commissioner Shiner Kita said, to clear Jones's name to go into an agency that's not affiliated with the UFC in any way? Well, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's I think it's a, an option. I mean, because the commissioners did say that um, if he, I mean if he did agree to it, they would you know, it would come out come out of the fine that he just paid. So it's not like he's out a bunch of bunch mm-hmm. of money um, more because uh, this is a substantial fine. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't. I, I think the commissioners feel some like I did, and you know. USADA has came out and basically, for all intents and purposes, basically cleared John Jones. I think that's kind of fair to say that. Like, he didn't really mean to do this. I don't want to speak for them. I I read it a while back. But, you know, certainly John Jones thinks they've cleared him, you know. And and I I think... uh, I think she's just wanting to maybe, I don't want to speak for her, but maybe she's just wanting to say, okay, we know you're clean. Test with them. We'll release the results to the, to the, to the media, and, uh, you know, the CSAC will release all the results. I, I don't know. I, I can't really speak. It's, it's an interesting concept. When you saw the sanction came back uh, on John Jones, who was the 15 months, like you said, the, the one thing that they, they led with in that announcement was that the reason that it went from a possible four-year ban down to an 18-month ban initially was because he provided substantial assistance to them in another case, whether that be another anti-doping case or another or criminal case, what have you. Were you able to get any clarification from USADA on what that actually meant? Because it seems like there is still some confusion about that. Well, I talked to them yesterday about that. That's nonsense to me. You're gonna you're gonna tattle on somebody and get your get your get your fine reduced. I, I, look, I mean, I don't. Uh, that doesn't make that doesn't make that doesn't mesh with my way of thinking. I'm dealing with Mr. Jones, or I'm dealing with Fighter X or Fighter B. I'm not gonna reduce their punishment if they tell me somebody else is a doper. I mean, that that doesn't. I think I don't want to speak exactly for them, but but part of the rationale was well that's an effect that's part of an effective anti-doping program. I don't know about anti-doping programs other than the drug test that we issue here at CSAC, but it just it just seems like I mean somebody wrote it's called the snitch rule. Somebody called it that. Okay, I don't I don't I don't know I don't know about that, but. I'm not sure that well, I am sure. I don't think that's a good. I don't think that's good thing to be doing. Is is offering um, lesser sentences? I mean, look, four years is a long time anyway. That's a, that's that's it's not career ending, but it's close to career ending. I mean, you lose four years. I don't know. You know, you're gonna have to find a new line of work. It's a work work license. So. Uh, that's that's my thoughts on that. Let me ask you about two unrelated topics. You guys at CSAC had Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury recently at, at Staples Center in Los Angeles. Bit of a controversial decision in that fight. One of the judges, I believe, was Alejandro Rochin, mm-hmm. uh, went for Wilder. Another judge had it a draw. The other one had it for, for Fury. But decision, uh, draw. A little bit of controversy about the Wilder scorecard. What, what is your opinion on that? Well, I sit on, Wild, I sit on Rochin's side. So it's me, Mauricio Suleiman from the WBC, and the lead inspector, Mark Ray, and the chairman. So we were all on that side. Man, I saw a wilder fight, but I'm not a judge, okay? But he was real close, really, really extremely close. So I'm really okay with the scores. Those first four rounds were incredibly close. And if people don't think that they were, so you got 9 and 12, Okay, and you've got one that all the judges agreed on. So the best Fury can do is 115. That's just math. Mm-hmm. So if you don't give him any more rounds, okay. I mean, that they were close rounds. So I could see somebody doing that, but I could also see somebody giving Wilder more rounds. Um, and 
our judges agreed on the last, I believe it's four rounds, and they agreed on the first round, and then them other rounds, I forget which rounds they agreed on, but they were kind of all over the map, but that shows, you know, Fury's definitely won the middle rounds, 100%, 100%. But just mathematically, I had like, you know, I don't want to give you my score exactly, but I, I, I thought, I thought, you know, I was okay with the split draw. I was okay with that. Um, but I don't think it's fair to berate Alejandro Rochin like he doesn't know what he's doing. He's one of the most experienced judges in, 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 in this hemisphere. And, and uh, you know, he, he saw the fight he saw, and he gave the first four rounds to Wilder, and those were close rounds. Last thing, uh, also under Seaside Jury Session, was the Liddell versus Ortiz three fight recently at the Forum in, in Los Angeles. Chuck Liddell was, was suspended medically after that fight indefinitely. What does that mean exactly, uh, I mean, from, from the commission's view? He's suspended indefinitely. Does, does that mean, does indefinite mean forever, I guess is what I'm asking? Or, or is there, will there be like a, an application process kind of like we have with John Jones to get like a license back? How, how would that work? If, if Chuck Liddell comes to CSAC and says, I want to fight again, how would that process work? Well, you know, I don't think, I mean, I don't want to speak for Mr. Liddell. You'd have to ask him. Um, but I'm just going to leave my, I'll, I'll just leave my suspension language as it is. It means indefinitely. That means indefinitely. Fair enough. Thank you, sir.